Tour. Kia ora. Kia ora. Okay, Mr. Speaker. I call Materia Ture. Uh, tēnā koutou katoa e te whare. Kia ora. Um, I just want to uh, lend the Green Party support to uh, the second reading of this bill. We're very pleased um, to have the opportunity to do so. This is, I want to follow on from what Nanaya was talking about, that this is another bill um, that gives uh, the environment legal status, um, a legal identity. And it's, it's, in New Zealand at least, it is a new and very innovative way of considering how the environment uh, needs to be protected um, and restored, that it is entitled to its own integrity and what the role of uh, the community is in protecting that environment. And I think it's a really exciting um, development in New Zealand law. The, what it does, I mean, it's the right thing to do for a start, but, also, but what it does is it clearly puts um, humans in our rightful place in terms of the environment. We are not the masters of our environment. We are its servants. We are 100% dependent on the health um, and the nurturing that the natural environment gives us for our life and for our future. So there really is no alternative. It's not, it simply is not negotiable to uh, protect our natural environment for ourselves and for our kids and for our grandkids. So the legislation that we see here today and the previous legislation we've had in the House um, has given us an opportunity to think about how to give uh, the environment legal status, a set of legal rights and um, the obligation and responsibility then on the people around that environment um, to work for its protection and restoration. It accepts that the environment, whether we're talking about a river or a forest or a lake or um, something bigger is entitled to its own integrity for its own sake. And that is at the core of uh, iwi Māori, of tikanga Māori, and it is at the core of the environmental movement. Um, and these things are finding their way uh, together. It's a lesson, though, that has been taught to uh, the dominant culture, Pākehā culture, by Indigenous people. And we are seeing uh, all across the world uh, indigenous communities who are standing up for the protection and restoration of the environment and using all the tools they have, um, their bodies, their words, uh, the law, the systems, to demonstrate that value. Kaitiakitanga, uh, in our case, other values you know, described in other ways in other indigenous people's cases. They're using all of the tools that they have, we have, to um, put that value into our structures so that there is uh, a sense of legitimacy, uh, particularly to uh, Pākehā communities, dominant cultures around the world. Um, Bolivia was a very interesting example in 2010. Um, they passed the law of the rights of Mother Earth. Uh, and that law, uh, it gave, from their point of view, from their cultural point of view, it put uh, the Earth, the planet, and all its resources um, at the forefront of its law, um, those rights included the right uh, of the earth and its resources um, to life, the rights of water, uh, the rights of the air, the rights of restoration, and the right of the environment to be free from contamination. And so it was a, it was a huge um, commitment to the protection of the environment in a legal way, in a constitutional way in Bolivia, uh, and gave them a framework on which they would make all the decisions, uh, their social decisions, their economic decisions, their resource use decisions, and put right at the heart of all those decisions the right of the environment to be protected and restored. Um, the, we are, have been seeing over the last few months another fight around water, water is life and the standing rock protests that we've been seeing in Dakota in the US. And again, that is the indigenous people of that, of that country putting their lives, actually, their bodies and their lives on the line for the water resources that, uh, that is their life. From their point of view, you know, water isn't just a resource to be used, to be exploited, to be bottled and sold off. Water is life. Water is us. And I think they have this, there is a real connection between iwi Māori and uh, Whanganui, the iwi of this legislation and the Standing Rock conception about water, uh, because both 
treat water as the protection of our whakapapa, as the carrier of our whakapapa into the future. And so there is this huge network of indigenous communities around the world, of which iwi Māori are a part, who recognise how critical water is, not just to us, but to the future of the planet and to the future um, of our communities. And the iwi here have worked with uh, the government to put that principle into this legislation. And I think that's, an, that's enormously empowering. It's really exciting for those, all of us, who believe that uh, our natural resources deserve protection and restoration for their own right. So I want to uh, congratulate and thank uh, the iwi of Whanganui for taking this approach to the protection of this awa. Um, as I said, I think in the first reading, my grandma was from there. Um, she was born and raised in, um, in Jerusalem. She's buried at Pūtiki, uh, Pew Pew Ture. Um, so, you know, I've spent, especially as a kid, lots and lots of time up around there uh, with my dad, Richard. But um, so, you know, there's that real sense of, like, pride at, the, at how the Whanganui iwi have used the law to put this um, core tikanga Māori value um, at the forefront of the work that they're doing. So, so I'm not going to belabour the second reading. Um, it would be good to, for us to get on and be able to um, complete this legislation as soon as we can. But I think it's a very, very exciting development in law. I think the next step, though, I would just say this, the next step is that this concept moves not away from just being in treaty settlements, that it moves away from just being um, part of uh, iwi Māori, hapu Māori approach to the protection of natural resources and becomes a much more dominant um, tool in the protection of our environment. There is no reason why we can't use this principle of giving our environment legal protection, legal status, um, as a way of giving us the structure about which we make decisions about water use, for example, which will continue to be a major issue for iwi Māori, but also uh, New Zealanders in general. Um, that giving uh, legal protection to our um, atmosphere would be one way that we could have a structure, um, a framework for thinking about the pollution, particularly the climate pollution uh, that this country um, engages in and the increasing climate pollution that we engage in. This is not a tool that should be isolated only to, uh, to treaty settlements or isolated only to the work of iwi Māori. It is actually a tool that we should be using much more broadly to protect our environment. These are lessons that uh, Pākehā governments all around the world should be taking from Indigenous people all around the world. Thank you, Mr Speaker.